thank you everybody for joining us, taking the time out of your day. Our goal is to educate and empower our clients so that they can make the best decisions for their families. My name is Nestor Acaza. I'm with the Nestor Acaza Real Estate here in San Mateo County. And we want to help you, whether that's, you know, staying in your home forever, moving out of state, out of the country, upsizing, downsizing. I provide a full service experience, concierge experience to our clients. That includes connecting you to the appropriate professionals, CPAs, attorneys, contractors, handymen, 1031 agents, and anyone in between. So to get you top dollar for the sale of your home, we have no interest renovation loans that can be paid through the sale of the property. Those include project management of whatever renovations you're doing. And we're constantly vetting and growing our network to be able to address our clients' needs. And so uh, we also have today on the panel, uh, two of my favorite people to work with. We have Ed Diaz and Brett Lytle, and I'll go ahead and let Ed Diaz say a little bit more about what he does. Thanks, Nestor. Yeah, as you were saying, you know, as a team, it's always important to have a team. And one of the things that I've recognized over the many years, even before I was in the mortgage business, being a financial advisor, is that the power of team makes all the difference. And this is the reason why, as Nestor said, why we bring these. It's not to sell you anything, but more to impress you with uh, our network that we want to share with you, because what good is a network unless you activate it? And Brett is best of class for sure. And you will see that in this presentation today. We want to be able to give you guys information that you can right after this implement and at least be armed and dangerous to know so that it can positively affect your family I'm moving forward. I do residential loans. I've been doing it for 21 years. I take on more of the role of advisor is the way I approach my business. So not here to sell you mortgages, but more helping you make really informed and, and good financial decisions around either purchasing a home or and or refinancing. So getting the best loan for you, locking in the rate at the right time, because that is it, it involves a lot more technical knowledge than just reading a rate sheet. So thanks again to both Brett and Nestor, and thank you all for attending. Great, thank you. Um, my goal is just to give you information so you can make uh, intelligent, informed decisions. So that's kind of what we're here for and dealing with very difficult and politically sensitive topics on how Prop 19, the loss, maybe reintroduction of Prop 58 affects your financial future. And without further ado, we'll start the presentation. So I wanted to make sure everybody understands Prop 13 has not been changed. So Prop 13 froze the values at 1976 levels. It limited the increase to 2% per year, no matter what inflation, no matter what the appreciation was, you're capped at 2% per year once you purchase the property, as long as there's not a change in ownership. The other thing that most people forget is that Prop 13 required a super majority of the lawmakers and the electorate to pass any tax increases. So that's one of the things that, that occurred way back when, when the Jarvis Gantt coalition were, were in play. Um, and they passed a number of different propositions regarding California real property tax. Be aware that California is the only state that has anything close to Proposition 13. My mother who lives in Iowa, my sisters who's in Kansas, my other sister in Minnesota, they are reassessed and revaluated every year. My mother pays 4% property tax. California is limited to 1% property tax. In any county except San Francisco, figure it's about 1.25% because of all the bond issues that were passed by two thirds of the electorate. So nothing with Prop 13 has changed. But on November 30th of 2020, 
the voters approved Proposition 19. It was called the Home Protection for Seniors, Severely Disabled Families and Victims of Wildfire or Natural Disasters by barely 51%. So it makes changes to the property tax benefits for families, seniors, and I get a little upset when I see the word senior and then you use the age 55, but that's their definition of seniors. Severely disabled individuals and victims of natural disasters in the state of California. The legislature actually passed this and the governor signed it to get it on the ballot at the very last minute. It's actually a change to the Constitution, and it didn't have a whole lot of implementing statutes. So there's still questions on what's going on, what happens, and what is go going to occur. So Prop 58 was removed by Proposition 19. It was passed in 1986. Prop 58 was the parent to child transfer. And I'll get into more details later what Proposition 58, but as of February 16th of 2021, Prop 58 is no longer part of California's constitution. It is simply gone. You had to have stuff done by February 16th of last year for the new Prop 50, excuse me, for the new Proposition 19 now comes into play. Proposition 19 replaced Proposition 60, which was passed in 86, and Proposition 90, which is passed in 88. Those were the provisions that allowed some counties to allow you to sell your property, transfer your property tax basis to other counties, but the counties had to agree. Most of the counties in the state of California did not were not part of those Propositions, Prop 90, Prop 60 was the sale inside the same county. Proposition 110 was also changed, but it was pretty much reenacted in whole. If you're se severely disabled and it's your primary residence, then again, you can take advantage of selling one and buying another one under Prop 19. So there's some very, very good things that came about with Prop 19. It does a great job of protecting property taxes and rates for certain residents. It makes it much, much easier to upgrade or downgrade your primary residence after 55 and take your property taxes with you. It also allows the funding of needed improvements without having it subject to reassessment. The not so good part of 19 is it restricts property transfers and saving the property tax rates and the assessed roll value. And that's the term of art. So your assessed roll value is the property tax statement that you get in another side, slide. I'll show you one from San Mateo County. It makes inheriting property, and that was one of the questions in the chat, harder to do. And depending upon the numbers, it may or may not work for you. It also makes it harder to retain inherited property as it only applies to the primary residence. And it may create additional issues with individuals that in the past were able to transfer property to their children without reassessment and it may be partially reassessed. So how do you determine what the family residence is? This is actually a bill from San Mateo, excuse me, Santa Clara County. If you look through in red, it says less homeowners exemption. You're only allowed one. That's how the county assessor determines what's your primary residence. It's not like the income tax where you have to reside in it and own it two of the last five years and all those things. You need to check to make sure your parents and your own home has the homeowner's exemption on the right piece of property. Because if it's on the wrong piece, they will not allow you to do Prop 19 
if you're going to sell and move up or move down. So please check your property tax statements and make sure there's a homeowner's exemption and it's on the right piece of property if you own more than one. So again, there's different dates where different parts of Prop 19 became effective. So the previous date I gave you was February 16th, but effective April 1st of 2021, if you're a senior and their definition of seniors over 55, disabled or a victim of wildfire or natural disaster as declared by the governor, you're able to transfer the value of your primary residence to a newly purchased or newly constructed replacement property. Under the old law, you can only do it one time during your lifetime. Under Prop 19, it's a great improvement. You can do it up to three times in your life. The old law, you had to look if you were widowed or divorced, did the person you're gonna marry, have they already used it? If they did, you couldn't use it if you married them. There was just a lot of restrictions that are no longer there because now everyone has three opportunities, not a single opportunity to move up or move down. Again, only seniors, only in the state of California. There's now no longer Prop 60. There's no longer Prop 90. You can go anywhere in the state of California. Previously in the Bay Area, it was Alameda. San Mateo, Santa Clara, San Diego, and there are about eight other counties that allowed you to do that. Under Prop 19, now you can go to any county you want. You don't have to worry about it. You can transfer your assessed roll value, which is how they determine your property taxes. So it's a great improvement. Again, I can't stress enough three times, not one time. So now you don't have to worry. Well, I guess you do still have to worry. If you're getting remarried and the person has used it three times, then you've got problems. If they haven't used it three times, then you're fine and don't have any issues with that. The old rules were very, very strict. You had to sell your house and pay that amount or less it was a slight increase if it was within one year or within two years. But if you went $1 over the allowed amount, it was 100% reassessment. Those rules are no longer applicable. It can be a partial reassessment. Under the new rules, you'll clearly have two years from the transfer of the first property to complete the second transaction. So you don't have to do it right away. That means that you can build, these days it might be more than two years to build a residence with all the problems with the supply chain and, and getting stuff, but you have two years to complete your transaction. So if you have uh, raw ground and you're putting a home in it, you have two years to complete it. Again, it's a somewhat complicated process because it involves a lot of math. There are applications and they're slightly different for each county. And in Santa Clara County, the fee is $110 and it's non-refundable non if you don't use it. So it's an application to, to get the process. So again, it makes sense under the new law, you can sell the property, say you sell the property for, in this area, a million and a half or $2 million. If you buy a replacement property and it's $3 million, you're only gonna be partially reassessed for the million dollars above and beyond what you sold the property for. Using rough math, that would add 12,500 onto your property taxes and a million dollars onto your assessed roll value. Remember the assessed roll value has land and building. Your primary residence will say less the $7,000 exemption. So if you're slightly over, now it's not a big deal. Before it was all or nothing proposition. So again, if you sell it for $2 million, you buy a home for less than 2 million, there is no reassessment 
no partial reassessment. You are allowed to take your assessed rule value with you when you transfer it for yourself. So again, great opportunities for, again, seniors, disabled, wildfire, accident victims, natural accident victims that doesn't have to be fire. It could be mudslides or other stuff, just as declared by the governor. Again, great changes, a great thing was done to help people. Now we get to the side where kind of I'm talking about the cons. And the cons are there are more restrictions for inheriting property. So it has to be an inheritance. Old rules allowed you to gift it, allowed you to sell it, allowed you to do a number of different things. You can no longer do that. It has to be an inheritance. Your property taxes are dependent upon the values of the property. So you basically look at your assessed roll value, whatever number that is, you add a million dollars to it. If it's the fair market value is less than that, no reassessment, not a big deal. Unfortunately, in the Bay Area, certain areas in Los Angeles, Sacramento and San Diego, there have been a number of individuals that bought property in the 60s, 70s, or 80s and paid less than $100,000 for it. And those properties can be worth several million dollars. So I'll go through an example a little bit later. But again, once you go through under the new Prop 19 for inheritance from parent to child, again, Prop 13 kicks into play, it can only go up 2% per year. So remember, nothing's changed about Proposition 13. Now it is very clear that only one child can use Proposition 19. So if there's multiple children, only one can claim the Prop 19 for the family residence. It can't be split among a number of different siblings. So if the assessed roll value was $250,000, so probably bought in the late 80s, mid 80s in the Bay Area, and the market value was a million dollars when it was transferred from the parent to the child, then you would take $250,000, add a million to it. The fair market value is only a million, so it's less than 1.25 million. There is no reassessment, not even a partial reassessment. The property taxes would stay the same. And again, it would be the 2% per year under California, um, Prop 13 under California. It was just a question that popped up, so I apologize. Here's a more complex, and again, if you want the slide presentation, you're welcome to have it. Nestor um, will have it, and Ed will have the links. Um, there's a lot of text in this one just because I'm working the math out to kind of show you examples. So alternatively, if the market value exceeds the million dollars and the prior assessment value partial relief is granted. So the example I have in front of you, and again, I apologize uh, for the slide, it's just got a lot of text because there's a lot of numbers. So for example, if the family home um, had an assessed roll value of $300,000, and the market, fair market value at date of death was 2.5 million, then there would be a partial reassessment. And the way the math works is you take the 300,000 assessed roll value, you add the million dollars of Prop 19, so that total is $1.3 million. 
the difference between fair market value and the value of the million plus the assessed roll value is 1.2 million. You've exceeded it. So that is added to the assessed roll value. So your new assessed roll value is no longer 300,000, it is 1.5 million. If you're doing rough math for any county except San Francisco, use about 1.25%. If you're in San Francisco, use about 1.5%. San Francisco has been very, very uh, generous and aggressive in passing bond issues and other issues that are assessed on the property taxes. So it's 1% for the true property tax, all the rest of the measures, mosquito abatement district, all those things are, uh, again, part of it. I'm just going back real fast, so don't get dizzy. But if you look at it, it's got um, a library, uh, Measure E, Measure H, Los Altos, sewer service, mosquito vector, mosquito abatement, North County Library, the floods, safe and clean water, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So those are the things that the voters have passed on the property tax. The top part is land improvements, total less homeowners exemption. So that's how you make the determination. So with the example, again, it's showing you do get a, to keep the 300,000, you get a million dollars for free, but anything above that assessed roll value plus the million dollars is subject to partial reassessment. Hopefully that's somewhat clear, but again, if it's not clear, please ask Ed or Nestor for a copy of the presentation. We'll also, I'm recording it, so you can also listen to it again if you would like to. Unfortunately, a lot of homes were passed especially in the San Francisco Bay Area that were middle-class homes, onto their children. Otherwise, it would be impossible for the children to stay in the area if everything got reassessed. The good news is that if your parents passed away before February 16th, 2021, you're still under the old Prop 58 rules. If they have not, or the transfer wasn't completed before that date, you're under the new rules. So it's not retroactive. Again, it has to be after February 16th. So the example I have, and I'm going to flip back to the slide because I actually computed the increase in property tax. So based upon the lower example of the fair market value being 300,000, excuse me, assessed roll value being 300,000, the fair market value being two and a half, Based upon those numbers, you would have gone from $3,750 for the old property tax, the new property tax would be $3,750 plus 1.25% of $1.2 million, so it would be $18,750. That is going to cause some people not to be able to keep the family home with those numbers. The other thing Prop 58 went through is it allowed you to transfer a second home. So a vacation property or rental property if you had $1 million assessed roll value of other properties. Prop 19 eliminated that. Prop 19 as of February 16th only covers the family residence as determined by that homeowner's exemption on the property tax statement. So the people that have asked questions, please look at your parents' property tax statement. Make sure that they filled out, most counties it's a postcard, saying that they want the homeowner's exemption on that piece of property. That's step number one. Step number two is to look at the actual property tax statement, see what the assessed roll value is, get a rough idea of values, and then you can add the assessed roll value million dollars onto that as long as the fair market value is that price or less then there's no reassessment if it's higher then it would be proportionally based on the amount that is higher now 
here's the slide that is there to make sure you understand, and I'm going to try to simplify this immensely. The rules totally changed. You're only allowed Proposition 19 as long as you live in the property. If 15 or 20 years later, you decide, ah, you don't want to live there, you want to make that a rental property, you lose the Prop 19 exemption. The county assessor goes back to when your parents passed away, determine the full value as of that date. They do the math of the 2% increase for every year that you've owned it. That will become the new assessed roll value and your property taxes will go up immensely. So again, Prop 19 is only available if you live in the property. If you don't live in the property, no matter how many years later, it goes back to date of death value. It's increased 2% per year as allowed by Prop 13. They run all those numbers up. That becomes your new assessed roll value. That will be your new property taxes. One of the other requirements is that when your parents pass away, you have 12 months, one year from date of death to move into the property, make the decision, move into the property, and file all the paperwork. If you don't get everything done within the 12-month time period, you lose the right to Proposition 19. So again, you're now forced to do stuff a little quicker. Um, great question. Uh, that unfortunately is part of the information that they're requesting in the current Prop 19. So I'm assuming they'll keep the records of fair market value at date of death. And they'll go back 10, 15, 20 years. That becomes a headache for the assessor's office. But that is again part of the information that you have to supply the county assessor. What you think the fair market value of date of death is, they get again, they have the right to challenge your values. And they have people that that's all they do is determine values for properties. So they don't have to accept your valuation for it. Again, it's just important to make sure everything that you've moved in, you've made it your residence, you've changed the property tax statements to your name and you filled out and completed all the necessary paperwork under Proposition 19. Again, the rules are different. Old Prop 58, you had three years. But under Prop 19, you only have 12 months, one year from date of death to get everything completed, or you lose the right to Proposition 19. where it's really gonna cause problems is small businesses. So the, the restaurants where mom and dad owned the property, not renting, but owned the property. That's not a primary residence, it's subject to reassessment to date of death, fair market value. So somebody that bought you know, a restaurant in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even in the 80s, it's probably $100,000, maybe $200,000 assessed roll value. You're paying, you know, $2,500 a year. The property is worth three to five million dollars. When your parents die, unfortunately, you're going to be subject to the new assessed roll value. And doing rough math at five million dollars. Unfortunately, you end up going from roughly 2,500 to 62,500 in property taxes. So again, it's going to change the landscape. Um, I'm even seeing it in, in put in leases right now, where somebody goes through and says, okay, I'm not going to, it's a triple net lease where I'm responsible for the rent, the property taxes and insurance. So I'm seeing limitations being put in. Because again, those circumstances are currently applying where all of a sudden it's 2,500 and it's going to $62,000 uh, a year 
that could really hurt a tenant. So again, if you're a tenant, just be aware when your lease comes up, you want to be careful on those types of things. So again, the problem is with small businesses, vacation homes, none of that is exempt like it used to be under Proposition 58. Hope everybody understands that. Good news, bad news. That Howard Jarvis, the originators of Prop 13, are gathering signatures to put on this November's ballot. Again, there's website information that you can go in and look at it to put back in Proposition 19. I haven't been able to determine uh, if they have sufficient votes, um, but there are, uh, again, the websites are here. You can go and look. There are a number of people that have petitions. If you want to sign it, you can do so. You can look to see what they're doing, but they're basically trying to put back in Proposition 58. And as I said, Proposition 58 put in the primary residence no matter what the fair market value was, no matter what anything was. If it was $100,000 or $10 million, the property taxes didn't go up. There's been some talk in the legislature. I don't know if they have the votes to be able to pass it. So the, so the uh, Howard Jarvis Coalition is trying to get the sufficient number of votes to put it back on the ballot, to put in Prop 58, 58 only. Everybody likes the three times. Everybody likes the ability to go to any county you want. Everybody likes the fact that if you're $1 over, it's not 100% reassessed, it's only the $1. So again, there's a lot of great things in Prop 19. It's the inheritance side um, causes issues. And that was one of the questions on inheritance. So if, if big if, if Proposition 58 is put back in, then it goes back to it doesn't have to be an inheritance. Your parents can give it to you while you're alive. They can sell it to you if they need cash. There's a lot of different ways that you can get the property. No partial reassessment. As long as it's the primary residence, no issues, no matter what the fair market value is. There's also $1 million of assessed roll value of quote unquote other property, which means it can be a rental, it can be a vacation home, it can be a small business, it can be anything. I've kind of ignored the, the farming side of it, but everything's pretty much similar with the farming side. I just don't think we have too many farmers listening to the presentation um, tonight. So again, if it goes back, and again, to repeat myself, you have $1 million, not of fair market value, assessed roll value, which is the property tax statement of other property that you could pass without reassessment. That would protect the small businesses that the parents own the property and aren't simply renting. So that's kind of the current state of the law. I don't know if they're gonna get sufficient signatures to get it on the ballot. I believe they have till April 15th. Again, the websites are there. If you want to go to uh, sign a petition, get more information. Again, that's just what we're trying to do is get you, give you information so that you can make intelligent decisions and um, hopefully do what you're able to do. There are a lot of issues in this area. Um, I'm seeing a lot of parents that passed away that bought in the 50s and 60s. They're paying, you know, less than $2,000. So their assessed roll value is, is well under 200,000. And, you know, in Redwood City, it, it wouldn't surprise me that a lot of people have parents where their assessed roll value is probably $100,000. And the fair market value is a million and a half or $2 million. There's going to be a partial reassessment. Um, I apologize to the individual that asked the question on being able to pass the uh, property from the parents to her, to parents to them, and to keep the property taxes low. You do have to do the math. You do have to have a rough valuation to see what the fair market value is. You have to pull out the property tax statement that's coming July 1st. 
and kind of run the math on that. Um, there's a question on joint tenancy with right of survivorship. Again, that is a form of inheritance. If it is husband and wife, there is an exception. You don't have to apply Prop 19. But if you put children on with joint tenancy with right of survivorship, and you put all your kids on and you have more than one, then you have a problem with Prop 19 because it's only applicable to one. So you just have to be very careful in how you title the property. And currently, with the current law with not having Prop 58, what you're doing. Yes, you can actually, I apologize, I should read the question. If our current residence property tax basis was a parent to child sale transfer, we would still qualify for Prop 19. If it was done, if it was a parent to child prior to February 16th of 2021, you're under Prop 58. It's very simple. When you pass away under the current law without Prop 58 coming back, Yes, your children would be able to use Prop 19. Just like the old Prop 58, it was one generation after another, after another, after another, which created a lot of disparity between property taxes. Uh, my neighbor who bought in 1948 paid $10,000. I don't think he was paying $1,500 a year in property taxes, and I was paying close to $10,000. So again, that was just part of Prop 13 and then part of Prop 58. So Prop 58 is gone. So the question, sorry, my question is, will we keep our Prop 58 correct? If you qualified for Prop 58 prior to February 16th, nothing changes. You're now under Proposition 13. Proposition 13 says it can only go up 2% per year, 1% for property taxes, and then all the miscellaneous stuff that the voters pass. Again, if it's not San Francisco, it's about a quarter percent. San Francisco is closer to uh, 50%. That's the chat. Now let me go to the question and answers. Uh, my mother moved to assisted living, now her primary residence. I moved into her home along with my daughter and grandkids. Prop 13 is working for her. Or correct. It still stays under Prop 13. It's when she passes. So the question is, but Prop 15, Prop 19, should she pass? She's 90. Wow, that's great. You've got long genes that she's 97. Um, you will... Again, you have to run through the calculation. I apologize on that. Again, if the assessed roll value and you add a million dollars to it, the fair market value is less than that total. Yes, you retain the assessed roll value and you'll be back in Prop 13. If the fair market value is above, then the amount above is subject to reassessment at 1.25% then you're into Prop 13. It can only go up 2% per year as long as you reside in the property. <clears throat> it has to be parent to child. Right now, unless Prop, the second question is, she inherited the property in Palo Alto where she grew up. You can only have one primary residence. You're absolutely correct. Pretty much of getting up thinking we can keep it when she does, unless Proposition 58 comes back into play. <clears throat> if the assessed rule value on that property and she inherited it probably is under a million dollars, and Prop 58 comes back, then yes, you will be able to keep the same assessed rule value, and Prop 13 will be applicable. But that's only if Proposition 58 comes back. What's currently happening, I see in my practice, is there's a number of people that are having to, to sell because of Prop 19. That's what occurred with Prop 13. Prop 13, the taxpayers' revolt, allowed people to stay in their property. Then they realized about seven, eight years later that, oh, we can keep the parents, but the kids can't keep them. And that's how Prop 58 originally got passed. So you, you, kind of have to hope that Prop 58 comes back. If it does, 
your assessed roll value is under a million dollars, then it won't be subject to reassessment. Uh, we talked, it's the county assessors are going to have to keep records of uh, the property and valuations from whenever somebody passed. My understanding, the I apologize, uh, the question is, will there be consideration to inherit Prop 19 a few months after one year? Uh, death due to delays in uh, living trust administration, pandemic, et cetera, et cetera. It never hurts to try and ask. The statute is clear. It says 12 months. So again, you, 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 you know, property tax is kind of strange. Because you think the Franchise Tax Board would be in charge of it because they're in charge of every other tax for the state of California, except sales tax. But believe it or not, it's the State Board of Equalization is in charge of California's property tax. Also, what's a little strange is each county kind of administers it in their own way. Let me use an example. The county assessors don't like fractions because they don't add up to 100%. So San Francisco changes those fractions into decimals, and they go up four decimal points. I have two sisters. So if we inherited the third, a third, a third, that doesn't equal 100%. So they routinely pick one person for that last decimal point not to be a three, but to be a four. Alameda County goes out eight decimal points. So again, the rules are, are, are slightly different between the counties. And then you have to appeal to the State Board of Equalization. They issue letters and recommendations and other things that the county assessors have to follow. But a lot of things, it's county by county. So the fees that are charged, the forms that they request, all those things are county by county. I apologize for that. Great question on can holding title in an entity, corporation, or trust help skirt this reassessment? It depends. That's my legal answer for you. Um, the issue becomes not with Prop 19, but with Prop 13. And I'll spend two minutes on it. And this is a topic I could spend an hour and a half on. Prop 13 says there's a change in ownership. If it's an original purchase by the entity, there's different rules. As long as there's not a change of control, <clears throat> no reassessment. But the entity has to buy it, not the individuals. The individuals buy it and put it into an entity, there's two tests, change of control and a transfer of 50 plus percent of the membership interest during the life of the entity. So that was one of the mechanisms prior to Proposition 19 in February 16th. You could actually cheat a little bit and use the million dollars um, if you were doing the math and had the property that you could you know, for an individual, you could get close to 40 or $50 million transferred under Prop 58 uh, using Prop 13. So again, the rules are different, but if the property is purchased by an entity, LLC or corporation, not a trust, then there are different rules that are applicable. So yes, that is a possible solution, but we're 45 minutes into the presentation. I can spend an hour and a half just on those things. So great question. Um, so limitations on Prop 58, again, it's Prop 58 can go to a number of different children. You can use it differently. One child could use it on the primary residence. <clears throat> if you're blessed to have bought property, had one client that had bought six pieces of property, was a realtor, and uh, all six of them were under a million dollars of assessed roll value. So he could leave those to his various kids, and it was not just one. So Prop 58, 
is one of those things where I hope it does come back. It'd be nice if it comes back this year, this November. But I think as more people are caught on the inheritance side, I think Prop 19 is fantastic for being able to move your primary residence from one county to another. If it's slightly over, you don't get hit. There's just a lot of great things on Prop 19. It's the, the inheritance side where it doesn't work as well. So if Prop 58 does come back, that will help. Uh, again, I don't know. I haven't had the opportunity. Um, as far as I know, there is not a petition to overturn Prop 19. That was a question. Uh, because people like the three opportunities that they can go to any county. I mean, if you sold in Santa Clara and wanted to go to San Francisco, 100% reassessment. Because San Francisco was not a participating county in Prop 19. I don't think Prop 19 is going to go away on the over 55 rules because I think it's a great improvement. I think the issue is that I think ultimately the voters are going to approve Prop 58 coming back. That's my personal opinion. So take it for what it's worth. And, and I do hope it comes back just because, again, there's a lot of small businesses that are going to be severely hurt. They're going to have to sell. They may have to lose the business uh, because of the way it was implemented. Again, it was done very quickly. It was done, uh, again, uh, because the House, the Senate were able to pass a supermajority. The governor signed it, was able to get on the uh, November ballot. We had COVID. There wasn't a lot of information. They did a great marketing campaign. Uh, without really telling anybody they were losing the inherited side. So again, it's I do hope it comes back. My opinion is at some point it will because it's going to cause the same issue that was caused between um, 86, I think it was, when Prop 58 passed and the late 70s when Prop 13 passed. So I'm hoping it does come back sooner than later. Um, unfortunately, I've had a few clients that are stuck. I haven't been able to determine if it's retroactive back to, you know, February 16th. That kind of doesn't make sense because it has to be a constitutional amendment. So it would be from the, the point of the vote being approved. So if you're caught in between like the one later, mom's 97, um, hopefully she hangs in there for a few more years and Prop 58 comes back to you for the uh, Palo Alto property. I think I've answered the questions, and I think I've got at the um, thank you for the the uh, election ballot measure initiative. Uh, I personally don't think it'll pass because it's just Prop 19 does too many good things. Uh, and people that want to be able to sell and move to different counties, it would, I don't think that will pass. I think prop, if you put Prop 58 back, you're going to get the best of both worlds. You'll get three opportunities. It won't be an all or nothing. The old rules were it was all or nothing. If you were $1 or more, you pay $1 more, it was 100% reassessment. So that portion of Prop 19 is a great improvement on what we had. It's just the inheritance side is, is not as good as what it could be. So I'm hoping they kind of keep Prop 19 on the over 55 disabled wire flyers and that three times. If you're over, that's the only part of reassessment. And then I hope they put back Prop 58. That's what I'm hoping. Nestor or Ed, do you have any more comments to say? My voice is going, so. No, I just did have that one question. I don't know if you addressed it and I fell asleep, but uh, on if Prop 58 were to come back, does that, how does that affect multiple children? Because 19 only, you're only allowed one child to use it. Right, under Prop 58, it could be multiple children on the house. Okay, so that's huge. So that's huge. It's multiple. If you had multiple properties, like the one client that was a realtor in San Francisco that had seven properties and six kids, <clears throat> one was the primary residence, all other five he was able to give to the kids. It went under Prop 58. None of it was reassessed. 
Brett, um, let me just chime in. If I'm understanding correctly, uh, in a situation, I think in a situation if somebody owns a lot of apartments or a lot of rental properties, um, this wouldn't apply. But in a situation where it's one home, wouldn't a way to maintain control of the asset would be to sell before the death of the parent, pay the capital gains, but keep the property tax base? You can't. Okay. Prop 19 only allows an inheritance. Mm. You can't sell it to the kids. Got it. That was, the, that, was, that was the nice part about Prop 58. It could be a gift, it could be a sale, or it could be inheritance, or a combination of all three. And we use combinations of all three. If the parents needed cash, it was the kids would buy a portion of it. But under the current Prop 19, it has to be an inheritance. Got it. Which unfortunately means somebody has to pass. So thank you to all, have a good night, and thank you for attending. Hopefully you got some information out of it. Yes, thank you everybody. We'll be sending out a survey, so please look out for that. And we'll also be sending out a copy of the slides and the video. And if you guys have any questions, any other questions, we can help you in any way. Feel free to reach out to me directly or Brett. And we look forward to working with you in the future. Okay, great, thanks guys.